like icky plot points just made me want to take a shower afterwards. But it's more like a contemporary with like a dash of shitty characters. <laughs> everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my worst books of 2021 these are the books that I hated the most I am not even going to give a disclaimer because like deal with it I didn't like these books other people do like these books and that's great but they just weren't for me these are also in no particular order they're just the books that I read this year that I did not enjoy in the slightest so without further ado let us get started I'm gonna start off with the ones that I still have my physical copies of because I just haven't brought them to the thrift store yet but the first one that I shall talk about is my true love gave to me by a variety of authors this is the OG Christmas anthology that when you ask for a Christmas anthology people recommend this. I did not like it. I gave it two out of five stars I believe. I only liked two out of the 12 stories in this so I gave it a two out of five stars to represent my anger at that fact. I found this book so frustrating because there are a lot of authors that I really did think that I was going to enjoy their stories from. The one thing I will say about this book is that the cover features the characters of the 12 stories which I thought was a really cute concept but other than that this book was just boring and underwhelming and and it took me out of the Christmas cheer. Next up is Squad by Mariah McCarthy. This was like a cheerleader thriller. This follows a girl named Jenna who is a junior. She's a cheerleader and she has a best friend on the squad as well. But then Regine, her best friend, starts hanging out with another girl on the squad and Jenna starts to feel very left out and excluded and then she turns into the, like this little evil demon of a girl and just does everything in her power to make the squad like fall apart basically and it was just a lot. Jenna was a lot. This book has a big focus on revenge and how Jenna went about getting her revenge but she became so obsessive with this revenge that it just got annoying very quickly and the things that she was doing to get that revenge just didn't make sense for what she had been done to her if that makes sense like she just went over the top when it was like not needed I was just not a fan of this I just didn't like it I thought it was like a thriller but it's more like a contemporary with like a dash of shitty characters <laughs> the next book that I have is actually like a whole trilogy but I'm only gonna hold up the first book because I don't care enough to go get the other two but it is the Madison Avery series the first book is Once Dead Twice Shy and this is by Kim Harrison um this was actually like one of my final reads of 2021 and it was so bad that the entire trilogy made it onto this list this follows Madison Avery who dies on the night of her prom but before her death she is able to grab the mysterious amulet from around the neck of the dark reaper that is trying to scythe her and this amulet gives her the form of a body and now she is towing the line of the living and the dead but the reaper wants his amulet back and he'll stop at nothing in order to get it and it's like the story of that these three books are literally just the exact same book done three times it was just repetitive and boring i hated the main character avery madison her name is madison her last name is avery but she was just so annoying she was like a cardboard cutout of a goth girl but like had special snowflake syndrome and she was always talking about how she had purple tipped hair and ripped clothing that featured a lot of skulls and therefore she wasn't like other girls and that's why nobody liked her and it just got old really quickly and it went on for three books. Why I read the rest of the trilogy, I don't know, just because I owned the books, but I regret it. I really do. The next book I have is The Ballad of Amy Miles and this is by Christy Dallas Alley and this this was a lot. Um, so I originally went into it thinking that it was like a cult novel. It's not. This follows Amy who ever since she was very young has lived with her grandparents on a very isolated camp. After the world fell apart many of the women became infertile and these young girls are being basically sold off to older men to repopulate the world. When Amy was a baby her mother ran away to avoid 
this happening to her again. But then her grandfather brings an older man to the compound for the sole purpose of breeding with Amy and so she runs away in the hopes of finding her mother and it's like the story of that. So this book just didn't make sense to me because it's supposed to be that Amy is so insanely brainwashed. But then over the span of like two days she completely changes her viewpoints on the world and I just don't think that that's realistic because if you grew up in a very religious household that is extremely strict like you don't change your mind within two days especially when you're very adamant about the beliefs of your household so it just like didn't make sense also the romance was extremely insta love it was like two seconds and they were in love with each other and I just like <laughs> not a fan of that I just was not invested in this story at all the entire time I was reading it I was just rolling my eyes at the character development and what was going on and that was upsetting because like cult book I thought it was gonna be so good and it just was not. The next one I have is Spells Trouble by PC Cast and Kristen Cast, and I was very excited about this because they wrote the House of Night series and the House of Night series, although very very bad, it was the series that really truly got me into reading because it was just such an addictive story. I was initially so excited about this book because it follows twins who are also witches. Hello twitches. I love it. I thought it was gonna be so good and um just wasn't. I won't lie, this book had me in the prologue. I thought it was gonna be so good. I was hooked. I was so intrigued with the story. But then chapter one came and it did not follow the same people from the prologue as it did in chapter one because it was like the past was the prologue. So it was like people from like 1920 or something like that. Whenever witches were around, I don't... 1930? When, when were witches around? 1950? I don't... I don't know. 1800s? Probably. Both of these main characters, their names were Mercy and... No, their last name was Mercy. What was their names? No, I lied. It was Hunter and Mercy Good. That was their names. They were both so irritating. They drove me insane over how self-absorbed and annoying they were. They literally did not care about anybody but themselves. I also just think that the writing and the dialogue in this was very childish. It was very stilted and just became annoying very quickly. It was also very repetitive. Felt like the exact same thing was happening over and 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 over again with no end. I did end up giving it two stars though because I do think that the story was unique. It just wasn't executed well so like maybe if somebody else wants to write a similar book that would be great but like also copyright, you know? The next book I have is May the Best Man Win. This is by Z.R. Elor and this is another one I was initially so excited about. It was advertised as like a second chance romance which like it was but also like not a healthy one. <laughs> it follows a boy named Jeremy who is the cheer captain as well as student body president he came out as transgender in his senior year and so he's decided that he wants to be homecoming king the only person standing in his way is his ex-boyfriend and it's like the story of that so like i said second chance romance enemies to lovers with a transgender main character i thought like we had a really good setup and it just fell so flat for me I thought that this was going to be like a really cute rom-com kind of situation and it definitely was not what I got myself into. I hated the main character Jeremy with a fiery passion. He was just constantly treating everybody around him, especially his friends, like absolutely garbage just because he was so insecure about his own masculinity and gender and it just drove me insane. Like I do understand his desire to appear more masculine to the people around him but I just felt like he adopted so so much toxic masculinity in order to portray this and it just got tiring really quickly. There was just absolutely no character development for him throughout the entire story which was really disappointing because I was like oh obviously there's gonna be this big build-up and he's gonna have his epiphany and he's gonna be like a wonderful little angel afterwards and it just never happened and I also didn't like Lucas the ex-boyfriend. He was neurodivergent but a lot of his story and plot was just about him blaming his autism for the things that he got into and I just didn't like the vibe of that. There is just so much transphobia and homophobia in this book, which like I understand is the point, but I just, it was too much for me. I also just think that the entire rivalry between these two could have been resolved with literally just one conversation if they would actually listen to each other, but it was just Jeremy shutting down Lucas anytime he approached him, and I just couldn't. I just... No, it's a no from me. Next up, I have Aetherbound by E.K. Johnson, and this 
this was a ride. So this follows Pent, who has spent her entire life on a spaceship where she has been told that she is worthless and nobody wants her. So she decides that during a layover that she is going to get off the ship and hide in Brannock Station. She ends up being found by the Brannock twins and they all hatch this plan to escape the predetermined destinies that are held before them and it's like the story of that. I thought I was gonna really like this because it was set in space and I just thought like, you know, I haven't read a lot of space books. That sounds fun. It wasn't. It was not fun. There was an aspect of the book that I was really intrigued by. There was like gene mages that could alter people's genes and I just thought it was a really cool concept and then it just didn't go anywhere. Like it did, but not in a way that you would want it to go. There was just a lot of plot points <laughs> that made me extremely uncomfortable and just like icky feeling inside. There's also a giant info dump at the beginning that you are just bombarded with and you think that you're never gonna get out of it, but then you do get out of it. But then it's just like the character doing things and telling you that they're doing those things. Like it just, it was a weird writing style in my opinion. I just, I didn't, I didn't vibe with this story and like I said just like icky plot points just made me want to take a shower afterwards. And then my final book that I'm going to talk about for my worst books of 2021 is The Trouble with Hating You. This is by Sajni Patel and I just really hated the main character. Laya Thecker infuriated the shit out of me. It basically follows Laya, who is a very successful biochemical engineer, and she is solely focused on her career. That's it. That's all she wants. She's not about marriage, and she doesn't want anything to do with it. So when her over-controlling dad proposes that she get married, she is like, hell no. I ain't gonna do that. So in steps Jay, who you think I would like because we literally have the same name, but no, I did not like him that much, but he is set up by their parents. Before they're even able to meet, Laya runs out the back door and literally runs right into him and then is just super duper rude to him. And it's like not his fault because like, he didn't know that she didn't know that she was getting set up. So like, <laughs> stop being a bitch, you know? But then the next day, Jay ends up being the lawyer who is assigned to the company that she belongs to that is going bankrupt. And his sole purpose is to make sure that they don't go bankrupt. So they're gonna have to spend a lot of time together. And they quickly realize that they both infuriate each other. But then when they have to spend more time together, they quickly realize that mm, maybe there's something here. So it's like an enemies to lovers, which again, I usually love, but <laughs> not in this case. I could not stand Laya and she pretty much ruined the entire book for me because she was just so angry all the time. She was treated very unfairly in her community so like I get it but also like take the stick out of your ass girl and just like breathe a little. Just breathe. She did get better by the end of the book but I just nope. I could not with this book mainly because of Laya which is disappointing because I wanted to like it because the love interest was named Jay but no you ruined it. Alright everybody, so those were my worst books of 2021. Let me know down below a couple of your worst books of the year or if you read any of my worst books and what you thought of them, I would love to know and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!